。第四十对演讲题目是 Number One， 计时开始。The meaning of humanitarian aid, as defined by the UN, states as the aid and action designed to save lives, alleviate suffering, and maintain and protect human dignity during and in the aftermath of man-made crises and natural disasters, as well as to prevent and strengthen preparedness for the occurrence of such situations. So, what pops into mind when it comes to Taiwan's humanitarian aid? For us, the meaning of humanitarian aid, especially in Taiwan, is starting small. But dreaming big. Next, my teammate Chris will focus on the specific examples of Taiwan's humanitarian aid. Thank you, Lauren. Love and care knows no bounds. As a nation that takes pride in its global position as humanitarian aid provider, there is a copious amount of solid examples that emphasize Taiwan's role to the world. Originating from 2004. Pan Sand Day for Indian Ocean earthquake, then moves on to helping Japan in 2011 earthquake and nuclear plant crisis, and most recently aiding Nepal in 2015 earthquake. Other ways of help Taiwan has provided includes donating money to allied countries in need. Examples include one million dollars for projects in Gambia, and even approximately 50 million dollars donations and loans to South Africa throughout the years. As President Ma has stated. Taiwan can achieve or benefit tons by providing help and humanitarian aid around the globe. Some of them in the form of news articles that praise Taiwan, while others include opening up gates of opportunity for further cooperation, like aiding Western Sahara with EU, or signing trade pacts with Japanese relations chief. But most importantly, it gives our nation a sense of philanthropic spirit, encompassing empathy and compassion, and a better public image around the globe. However, What more can we do than donating money or sending lifelines? Next, my teammate Andrew will elaborate on this. Thank you, Chris. American author Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, "The purpose of life is not to be happy; it is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have and make some difference that you have lived and live well." And that's what exactly Taiwanese doctor Luo Yijun holds as the guideline to his life. Dedicating himself to treating AIDS in Malawi at an early age, despite knowing all the hardships, risks, and oppositions from all sides, he says as a definite role model, and springs to our minds immediately to the question: providing a humanitarian aid being youth, while serving in Taiwan's army as alternative service troop, Lusa held the severity of the HIV disease in Malawi could crumble a whole country. He was inspired to continue his study in infectious disease, and gradually became the authority of the field. This is the elevation Taiwanese youth can bring to our nation's humanitarian aid. Next, my teammate Norbert would highlight how we can inspire our youth to follow their footsteps. Thank you, Andrew. To ignite the caring spark in Taiwan youth's hearts. Our government has encouraged and held many different activities inside school campus and out. Starting small, Taiwanese youth can participate in the many different competitions or events MoFA holds each year, such as the Youth Ambassadors, Mother United Nations, and Student Envoys. All these activities takes place within schools, making it convenient and reachable for youth at our age. Gaining experience after these activities. Taiwanese youth can move on to greater actions, including delegations such as the 2015 Taiwan Youth Delegations to visit Ottawa, held by external offices of Taiwan, or partake in events like Spotlight Taiwan Project Agreement, a treaty signed for exchange between Taiwanese students and the world. In addition, many local organizations such as Taiwan Panorama, Cixi's Overseas Volunteering Foundation, and Youth volunteers of Red Cross Taiwan all provide numerous amounts of volunteering opportunities for Taiwanese youth. Next, my teammate Lauren will sum up the speech for us. <clears throat> Thank you, Norbert. Starting small but dreaming big with love—that's how we think Taiwan's youth can involve in our nation's humanitarian aid. Learning the fundamentals, the many specific examples of Taiwan's humanitarian aid shows how we, our nation of love and hospitality. 
This helps us gain more worldwide recognition and praise and brings chance of further cooperation. For an example of Dr. Luo Yijun, we recognize how Taiwan's youth can involve in the nation's humanitarian work by starting small. And this concludes our sole reason here to take over the torch of humanitarian volunteering everyone in Taiwan has done before us, rekindle the spark, and maybe even expanding it with our innovative, energetic, youthful hearts. Thank you. 第三十九对演讲题目是 Number One， 计时开始。In response to the UN Millennium Project, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs has made a considerable contribution in humanitarian aid, such as the eradication of hunger and poverty, popularization of primary education, promotion of environmental sustainability. And some immediate measures against infectious diseases. Even though we are not a member of the UN, we still spare no effort to help those in need. As a country that enjoys the reputation of high technology and high advancement, we still spare no effort to help those in need. On one hand, we have worked with Mercy Crew to help settle down the refugees comes from Syria. On the other hand, the enormous resources that were poured into medical care aim to rescue those countries with various natural disasters. For example, there are over 10,000 victims who benefit from us after a devastating typhoon called Hai Yen occurred in Southeast Asia. In addition, we have trained more and more medical crews from those countries for about two to three months and sent them back to their hometown to help people suffering from malnutrition, food shortages, and even trauma from devastating disasters. As the saying goes, give a man a fish and you can, teach him, and you can feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish and you can feed him for a lifetime. When natural disasters happen, Taiwanese people not only devoted themselves to immediate rescue, but also to programs for those in need. Besides our official government, Taiwanese people are also actively involved in the humanitarian aid, such as Ciji, Red Cross, and other charitable organizations. The increasing engagement in this charity career shows our person's generosity improves our image in, in the international communities. Even though we are not the most powerful country in the world, but we still spare no effort to help the needy. When the horrible terrorists attacked America, our Ciji was one of the only three organizations coming to their aid. When the first earthquake destroyed Sichuan, we helped them with money and medical resources. Every, everything we've done shows that Taiwan is a country full of love and peace. As a young generation, what we need to do is to cherish the legacy that the adults pa passed down to us. We should do our best to help those who are suffering from miserable living conditions. Even though we might not have enough money, but we have the privilege to use the internet to call for help and raise awareness around the world in certain needs. And Alex, can you give us any examples? For instance, we can share or post what is actually going on in those vulnerable countries on Facebook and Instagram, so that more and more people can keep up with the latest international circumstances. And we can also raise funds on internet so that we have more resources to help victims. And last but not least, we should take over the responsibility of being a person that is willing to help others all the time. Signing up for volunteering camps to help remote schools and children in Taiwan, or even joining international charity groups like Red Cross to help sufferers around the world. Although, we might just be an ordinary citizen.
but we shall do what we are able to do and do our best to make this road better. Thank you. Thank you. The 36th Speaker 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 is number two. Let's start. Twenty years ago, my dad was doing his PhD in England. In order to get the visas to go to Germany and France for his academic research, he had to visit their respective embassies in London. And spent almost 200 US dollars and more than one week to get the visas. What was worse, at the embassy, he was directed to wait in a specific line for people from special districts instead of Asian countries due to Taiwan's ambiguous status in the international community. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. But now, the situation has changed. Our government has negotiated with 153 countries to grant us visa waivers or landing visas. What significance does this breakthrough imply? Here, my teammates would like to elaborate more. Sophie? Thank you, Sean. It's hard to imagine Taiwanese people had to spend that much money and time to get foreign visas. But today, we can travel economically and conveniently. By immersing ourselves in a completely different country, we can broaden our horizons. I am fascinated by the breathtaking scenery of the Rocky Mountains in Canada, the magnificent historical castles in England, and the romantic atmosphere along the Seine River in Paris. When it comes to traveling abroad, being an ROC passport holder is no longer an obstacle or a burden. Traveling abroad is now a feasible and productive way for us to develop international perspectives, and more importantly, to realize more opportunities to strengthen our interpersonal relationships. In this way, we can definitely enhance mutual understanding among countries. But it's more than that. Willie will tell us more. Willie? Thank you, Sophie. I totally agree with you. Visa waiver programs not only facilitate the development of our global perspectives, but also give great convenience to business travelers. As an engineer of a multinational corporation, my dad often needed to demonstrate or maintain machinery for his foreign clients. But back then, it took him ages to get a visa, which caused serious delays to production schedules. Now that more and more countries have granted visa waivers to us, these problems no longer exist. Meanwhile, the freedom and ease of traveling has encouraged our people to participate in global affairs and remain competitive in trade. This not only benefits the individual, but also facilitates the economic cooperation between Taiwan and other countries. With easier access to foreign markets, business deals can be made to keep pace with international standards. It's been a tremendous boost to our economy. But there's more. Yvonne? Thank you, Willy. It's true that visa-free privileges go a long way toward boosting our economic development and strengthening our relations with other countries. Besides developing international trade, visa waivers are a sign of Taiwan's ever-improving diplomacy. Not only does it signify a position Taiwan holds on the world map, but it also recognizes Taiwan as a member of this global village. Our government has been implementing viable diplomacy since 2007 with the main goal of being pragmatic and flexible with our policies. This year, 10 more countries were added to the list, making Taiwan fourth in Asia and 16th in the world in terms of visa waivers. This is another step closer to global acceptance. The MOFA's constant effort has improved Taiwan's reputation while reminding everyone to maintain Taiwan's good image abroad. Back to you, Sean. 
Thank you, Vaughn. 153 countries have granted us visa waivers, landing visas, or other visa privileges. We are not only recognized as a member of the global village, but also treated as an equal on the world stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is getting smaller, but Taiwan is getting bigger and stronger. Thank you. Good morning. Today, we will come up with some creative ways to, to, to introduce Taiwan. If we had the opportunity to represent our country on a trip overseas and to interact with local students. As we know, Taiwan, known as Formosa, is a beautiful island. If I became one of the team diplomats and represent our country on a visiting tour board, besides the beautiful scenery, I would let them know that Taiwan is a country with wonderful hospitality many special foods, various folk customs, and the most outstanding, the information technology. We are especially proud of our soft power, such as advanced electronic products, tra traditional cultures and art, including glove puppetry, Taiwanese opera, and modern works of art. Therefore, if we had the chance to promote Taiwan to foreign students, the above-mentioned features will be what we wanted to share with them, hoping to enhance the publicity and visibility of our country. Next, my teammate Karen will continue our speech. How to introduce Taiwan in a creative way? First of all, to show our hospitality, we will prepare a gift, which costs little, but is creative. For example, Using chopsticks when eating is unique in our Chinese culture. So we could give the local students a set of them wrapped in a cloth with some pictures on it. The pictures will be designed for ourselves, such as a map of Taiwan, our characteristic folk art, or even the aboriginals. In this way, we could express our friendliness and open up the conversation with each other. Second, we will present Taiwan by using the puppets. Glove puppetry art is one of our traditional cultures. By manipulating the puppets and adding interesting lines related to Taiwan, we can introduce our country and interact with them in a more dynamic way. Meanwhile, the delicate carving of the puppets would definitely catch their eye. Try to imagine when the puppets speak out some catchy slogans, such as Taiwan, a paradise of taste, or Taiwan, desire a new life. How interesting it will be. Next, Bao will talk about some other creative ways to introduce Taiwan. Besides the above two ways, I will continue to talk about another way to interact with them and to introduce our country. In our opinion, playing games will be the most effective and interesting way to interact with high school students. Therefore, before we set off, we would bring some traditional children toys such as bamboo dragonfly, shuttlecock, and whipping top. By presenting these old Taiwanese toys and playing with them, we could help them to have a better understanding of Taiwanese culture. Of course, we will also take advantage in this opportunity to let them know the soft power of modern Taiwan, especially those two application games, Cytus and Demo, which I hit the top charts in the App Store and won lots of international awards. In this way, not only will we prevent Taiwan's conventional cultures, but we also show how imaginative and creative the Taiwanese young people are. Next, my teammate Ashley will sum up our speech. To sum up, Taiwan is a great country with long-lasting tradition and amazing creativity. Therefore, as team diplomats, we will combine tradition with innovation to introduce Taiwan. We will use Eastern eating utensils to open up the good relationships with the local students. And the mainline puppets 
to introduce Taiwanese magnificent scenery, most watering cuisines, and innovative sites. What's more, to interact with them more naturally, we will bring along some traditional children's toys to play with them, and meanwhile, introduce Taiwanese young people's creativity and originality in the soft power. We believe that in these creative ways, the local students will understand Taiwan better and are more willing to support our country in the near future. Thank, Thank you. you. 第二十七对演讲题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。Good morning, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen. Taiwan has impressed the world with its multicultural compatibility. If we had a chance to represent Taiwan and go on a trip overseas to interact with the local students, we would like to introduce the diversity of Taiwanese cultures. By making local delicacies and perform dance and music. Next, let's have Extana to talk more about how we can introduce Taiwan by making local delicacies. Taiwan is composed of various ethnic groups, such as the Holo Taiwanese, the Hakka, and the indigenous people. Each group has its culture. And the fusion of the culture contributed to the Taiwanese cuisine. For example, renbing is the whole Taiwanese food. Rice cake is the Hakka dish, and bamboo rice is the Aboriginal delicacy. Therefore, it is a good start to introduce the multiple culture in Taiwan with food. On account of difficulty in cooking during a trip overseas, we came up with the idea of molding the food in paper clay. And displaying it to local students, with these paper plates, we can not only demonstrate the various Taiwanese food, but also demonstrate our creativity of making the food. These paper clay models can catch foreign students' attention and serve as useful visual aids when we introduce our culture. With concrete models and our elaboration, foreign students will surely be impressed by the diverse culture in Taiwan society. Next. Let's have Bobo to, up, to talk about another way to introduce Taiwanese culture. In addition to food, dance is another way we can introduce Taiwanese culture. Aboriginal dances, for example, are one of the traditions of the indigenous people in Taiwan and reflects their passion. We can introduce this culture by performing some easy and interesting dance moves to initiate foreign students' interest in learning them. Later, we would teach them the moves and encourage them to perform the dance and experience Taiwanese Aboriginal culture in person. By dancing with us, they can experience Taiwanese Aboriginal culture in a direct way and feel Taiwanese Aborigines' happiness at the same time. After they experience the dance, they will be more happy to learn about Taiwanese Aboriginal culture, and thus our goal is achieved. Next, let's have Mandy to continue for us how we can use music to introduce Taiwanese culture. Music knows no boundaries, and thus it serves as a perfect medium in introducing Taiwanese culture. Last year. A Taiwanese flash mob sang in Kaohsiung and amazed the public with their unusual singing performance. Likewise, we can use the idea of chorus performance to introduce Taiwanese culture to foreign students. We would compose a medley of Taiwanese, Hakka, and Aboriginal songs and sing it to our foreign friends through the melodies. We hope to strike a chord with our friends, and promote the distinctiveness of Taiwanese music styles successfully. As long as the wonderful song can linger on their mind for some time, we know that we have had a piece of Taiwan etched on their memories. Last but not least, let's have Sunny to sum up for us. Taiwan is a melting pot of different cultures. 
which is reflected in food, music, and dance. If we have the opportunity to introduce Taiwan to foreign students, we would like to start with these three parts. We will make paper clay models of food, perform original dances, and sing a melody for the students to recognize the beauty of the multiple cultures in Taiwan. Also, we can promote Taiwan as a friendly country where different cultures are respected and tolerated. Through these actions, the beauty of our homeland will stay in our foreign friends' minds for a long time. Thank you. 第二十六对演讲题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。Good morning. Let's take a virtual tour around Taiwan. Now, put on your glasses. Ready? Let's go, my friends. You're about to see the nature, culture, food, and civilization of Taiwan. After this, I guarantee that you will want to fly to my country in no time. We first start flying, flying over the coastlines, basins, plants, hills, and mountains. This is Taroko Gorge, rising high above Liu River like a 3D water ink painting. <laughs> now we are on the Ali Shan Forest Train, reaching up to 2,800 meters high above sea level. Wow! See that breathtaking sunrise? After the train ride, time to take a dip in the hot springs in Beitou, Jiaoxi, Raisui, and Zhiben. Ah, fountain of youth! All weariness is washed away. Let's head south to Kanding. With warm weather all year round, we can do all kind of water activities. Look at the vast blue ocean stretch all the way to the horizon. Feeling enchanted already? Maggie will take you further to the essence of Taiwan. Thank you. Good morning. Ethnic diversity is the essence of Taiwan. It has shaped Taiwan's distinct tradition and culture. First, Taiwanese Aboriginals are believed to be the origin of Austronesian peoples. Each tribe is worth exploring for their individual cultural legacy. Second, the grandeur of Chinese culture is perfectly preserved in our National Palace Museum. Here, you can admire all the fabulous collections of Chinese artwork and artifacts. Now, let's walk out of the museum and go join the Mazu tour, the largest religious pilgrimage in Taiwan. Mazu is an ancient sea goddess. There are about 1,000 Mazu temples in Taiwan. She is regarded as a patron for Taiwanese people. Join the Mazu tour. Have Mazu's blessing bestowed upon you. The indigenous legacy, Chinese history, and grassroots religious tradition, all together have built and enriched our civilization. Now it's Josh's turn to show you what Taiwanese people are like. Thank you. Good morning. So, what are Taiwanese people like? First of all, we're always ready to lend a helping hand. Wherever or whenever disaster strikes, Taiwanese volunteers are there, raising funds, rescuing lives. We are there. Getting lost in Taiwan? No worries. We will help you find your direction in no time. What's more, according to recurrent statistics from the FBI, Taiwan is ranked the world's second safest country. We can walk on the street any time of the day without worrying about gunshots or robbery. Taiwanese people are famous for being kind and friendly. We embrace the world with hospitality and humanity. After hearing all this, we should go grab a bite together. CNN has told the world that Taiwan is the best food destination in the world. Now, Billy will prove it to you. Thank you. Good morning. Mmm, smell that? From the Michelin Star Award restaurant to fresh seafood delicacies to street food at the night markets, the diversity of Taiwanese food is just incomparable. Gourmets from around the world can always find something to their liking and eat to their heart's content. 
and the savory gravy filled xiao long bao, omelette stuffed with fresh oysters, the mouth watering three cup chicken, stewed or red braised beef noodle, take your pick. Whatever you eat, your meal won't be complete without a cup of ice in hand. You already know about bubble tea. What you don't know is that no country in the world has invented more ways to drink tea as Taiwanese do. So, try one each day, and you'll realize that you have to stay in Taiwan forever just to finish all those kinds of teas on the menu. You have seen the culture, nature, food, and civilization of Taiwan. Now, we conclude this virtual tour. Are you intrigued? Welcome to Taiwan. Thank you. 第二十四对演讲题目是 Number Three， 计时开始。Good morning, judges. Imagine walking into a restaurant and you glance upon the counter ordering every single seafood dish on the menu. Then. Imagine the exact same scenario, but there are no more fish in the world. In 2048, that will be exactly the problem. Overfishing has become a global disaster, and we are here to help prevent the extinction of fish. This cru issue is crucial for us Taiwanese, since we are surrounded by sea and dependent on fishing. We can help alleviate these issues through a Systematic process. Together, let's help preserve the fishes. And now, let's welcome Ian to elaborate more on how we can do so. Ian, thank you, Charlotte. Fish are disappearing at a pace out of humans' control. Ninety percent of fish stocks are already gone and can no longer be retained. Demanding an abundance of fish. Also means that fish we don't normally eat are consumed by accident, also known as bycatch, which is when fish are caught and killed when swimming into nets. The main reason for this is humans' increasing demand for fish, having fish in multiple meals per week. As Taiwanese students, we can get together and form a club called Stop, which stands for Stop the Overfishing Process. In the club. We can get together and discuss the importance of this issue, and urge schools to reduce the amount of meals with fish. When buying fish from fishermen, our schools should also make sure that the fish are legally caught and consumed in the healthiest way possible. We could stop the disappearing of the fishes. Now, let's welcome Angel to elaborate more on the situation. Angel. Thank you, Ian. Overfishing not only ruins the ocean's biodiversity; it also destroys the sea's balance of life. Moreover, it also impacts the entire world's food security and economic welfare. In recent years, fish has become the main source of protein for over one billion people. In order to help with this issue, we can use the power of the internet. And create a Facebook page to promote and raise awareness. In the Facebook page, we can promote substitute energy sources, for example, hemp, chia seeds, and quinoa. Superfoods are not only high in protein, but also in fiber and vitamins as well. Now, let me introduce Stephanie to tell you how we can take this to a national scale. Stephanie. Thank you, Angel. By now, we have all reached a consensus that overfishing has got to stop. A significant step we can do to help is by joining organizations such as the T A M E E, the Taiwan Association of Marine Environmental Education, to help promote the concept. This organization holds biking events monthly and takes pictures through the process. They capture the marine beauty around Taiwan. By doing so, when other people see the magnificent scenery of the marine world, they won't want to destroy it by overfishing. Through joining organizations, 
we take this important matter in our own hands and make a difference. Now, let's invite Charlotte to conclude our speech. Charlotte? Thank you, Stephanie. Overfishing has become a global disaster, but we believe through the help of all Taiwanese citizens, we can show the world how this is a crucial issue. Through the small actions of Taiwanese people to the bigger actions, we can impact the world. Perhaps in 2048, not only will we be able to preserve the fishes, we can also retrieve the fishes we have once lost. Ian, Angel, Stephanie, together, let's, let's preserve, preserve the, the fishes! Bao, thank, thank you. you. 第二十三对演讲题目是 Number One， 计时开始。Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Based on the humanitarian principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and independence, humanitarian aid is a care for those who are in conflict, disaster, and emergency. From both government agencies. And non-government organizations, the aim of humanitarian assistance is to protect their security of life and property, alleviate suffering, and offer material or logistic support. In recent years, more and more serious natural disasters occur around the world, coupled with endless wars in the undeveloped countries. The number of people who need help can be said to be growing, and international aid has become an urgent duty of a country like us. We can donate money to improve public health, develop education, and so on. Taiwan has been long making efforts to defend human rights. Our next speaker, Rachel, will talk more about what Taiwan has achieved as a provider of humanitarian aid. A friend in need is a friend indeed. A report in Japan said so. In 2011, Tohoku earthquake and tsunami had caused a disastrous accident. At the crucial moment, Taiwan quickly dispatched our rescue teams to help evacuate the victims. Besides, the government and the people of Taiwan contributed at least six billion NT dollars. Ranking first in the world, and even more than the total amount of donation from 93 countries. On the other hand, in 2013, after the Philippines was hit and seriously devastated by a strong typhoon Haiyan, in addition to the donation, a great number of relief supplies, including tents, solar generators, 80 tons of rice, and so on. When transported there by 18 military aircraft of ours, simply from the aforementioned two examples, we can see how enthusiastic Taiwan is in the rescue operation of international aid. Next, Vicky will talk about how young people in Taiwan can get involved in the work of humanitarian aid. Although young people. May not have the ability to donate much money. There's still a lot waiting to be accomplished by us. Take Chen Luoshao for instance. This young girl who was awarded the honor of the 10 outstanding young persons last year has been working hard on international social assistance. In 2010, when Haiti was disrupted by a serious earthquake, many children lost their families. And became orphans. Chen Luoshao went all the way to Haiti to accompany them to learn and play, regardless of potential dangers. For a whole year, she stayed there for a mere purpose of helping them tide over their difficulties. What she has done really made her a role model of young people in Taiwan, and I do believe that. We should follow in her footsteps and seize every opportunity to get involved in such work, and to devote ourselves to what matters. Then our last speaker, Melody, 
will give you her idea and make a conclusion on this topic. As a Taiwanese, I do feel proud of our country for being able and being willing to help out. We, young people, should also take it as our responsibility to improve the condition of the people who need help in every corner of the world. Although we are only senior high school students, we might be able to bring about a little positive change. We can join associations to help vulnerable groups actively participate in voluntary work to engage in humanitarian assistance and do a lot to comfort the soul of victims. As Barack Obama said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for, and only when we have compassion for others can we have the ability to change the world a better place and join the real happiness and peace with people around the globe. Thank you for listening. 第二十一对演讲题目是 Number One， 计时开始。Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about humanitarian aid. What do you think humanitarian aid is? Well, basically, the explanation will be material or logistical help provided for humanitarian purposes, typically in response to humanitarian crises, saving lives, alleviating suffering, and maintaining human dignity are the top priorities when we execute humanitarian aid. Through various organizations and the power of youth, we can heal the wounds, provide shelters, and Improve the world, and now my teammate Astor here is going to tell you about government's actions. Thank you, Michael. In many countries, violence and insecurity continue to cause massive internal and cross-border displacements. The conditions could be worse if nobody came to their aid. Taiwan has always been a humanitarian aid provider to assist people in need. Take what we have done for Iraq as an example. We donated 350 prefabricated houses to North Iraq, which was highly praised worldwide. Also, in the year 2003, our diplomatic ally, Liberia, had suffered from civil war and starvation. To help them overcome the crisis, we provided 10,000 tons of rice. The Liberians called the rice white diamonds with appreciation. Taiwan's government also greatly supports the actions of non-governmental organizations, both financially and politically. Take Taipei Overseas Peace Service and the World Relief Agency of Taiwan as examples. They both provide great humanitarian aids for Southeastern Asia. As you can see, humanitarian aid really integrates Taiwan into the world community. And now, my teammate Martina is going to talk about our personal experience. Thank you, Esther. Humanitarian activities are not exclusive to a rich or charitable organizations. Every youth can get in on the act as well. For instance, my homeroom teacher invited everybody to participate in a project initiated by World Vision. What we do is sponsor a little girl from Cambodia and improve her life with just a few bucks per month. Afterwards, we started to write postcards and send care packages to her. We be believe that donating is a good method for youth to participate in helping the society. Moreover, humanitarian aid also includes mental comfort we can spread love and care to the world by using actual actions. And now my teammate Doris is going to provide more examples. Thank you, Martina. Volunteer groups in Taiwan have recruited youths from all over the world. A volunteer group called ACARD, which stands for Association of Culture and Art Resources Development, holds volunteering programs to needy countries such as Nepal in 2014. 
and cooperates with the Ecological Protection Forum to expand the scale of humanitarian aid. There is another organization called the ICYE, International Cultural Youth Exchange, which also calls upon youths to gather up and give different kinds of supports to other countries. Through attending these volunteer groups, we may succeed in humanitarian aid, especially when Taiwan's youth act as an idea spreader and action implementer. Now, my teammate Michael is going to give us a conclusion. Thank you, Doris. Without a doubt, humanitarian aid plays an important role in the global village. That is the power that bonds us all together. We confront problems that offer no easy solutions. We help save lives. We support livelihoods and better the well-being of people. There is no limit to what we can do through the power of humanity. So never, ever underestimate our ability. Taiwan's youth are willing to love. We're willing to help and we're willing to do everything, everything to help the world become a better place. Thank you. The number three. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All the countries in the world are now facing severe food safety problems, including Taiwan. Fortunately, an increasing large number of people are now getting conscious of whether or not the foods they take in are good for them. And we should try our best to call more people's attention to this international issue. A few months ago, the Food and Drug Administration of America set 2018 as a deadline before which they would rate foods of unhealthy trans fats which lurked in many popular products, such as fast food and frozen meals. Trans fats have long been linked to the risk of coronary heart disease, the world's leading cause of death. So, by reducing trans fats, FDA hoped it could cut down on the number of, heart, of deaths from heart disease each year. In addition, some countries already noticed the problems caused by excessive use of food additives, such as artificial sweeteners and edible pigment. Advocates who call for stronger regulations on food additives state that they can come with a list of side effects. For example, artificial sweeteners have been under the spotlight for decades. Studies have shown that more and more ADHD cases diagnosed at younger ages, and artificial sweeteners have been linked to triggering ADHD symptoms in children. For the past few years, there has been widespread media coverage regarding food safety scandals in Taiwan, such as toxic starch, plasticizer tainted foods, and dirty recycled waste oil, so-called gutter oil. In the wake of the tainted oil scare, hundreds of tons of mooncakes, pineapple cakes, bread, instant noodles, and steamed dumplings have been removed from shelves. Because there is great economic incentive for food companies to pursue higher profits, our health had been sacrificed. According to the Taiwan Food and Drug Administration, more than 1,000 bakeries and restaurants across the island had used the tainted oil. All the evidence suggests that Taiwan is faced with a serious food safety issue, and this merits our attention. Thanks to the media, people start to suspect the ingredients of some mouth-watering foods may potentially endanger their health. An increasing number of people have demanded that the government should not let the food industry get away with using harmful chemicals and additives during the food preparation process. In order to get Taiwanese people take food safety more seriously, official governments of Taiwan 
should impose tougher regulations regarding food safety. In addition to expiration dates, the government should require the companies to list the ingredients of food clearly and in detail. Nowadays, the TAP, Transport Agricultural Product System, encourages farmers and food suppliers to produce safe and healthy foods, which can be easily traced back in the form of QR codes. In the meantime, customers should be taught to pay attention to food labels when they are making their purchases. Social media exposure and the rise of investment reporting can empower customers to make healthier food choices. What's more, in the process of food manufacturing, we should scrutinize it and report it to the public to raise the people's attention and so as to make the people know the food are do no harm to their health. Food is a necessity to people, but it can also cause damage, damage to our health if not chosen properly. Countries and countries should all work hand in hand to protect our physical well-being. Furthermore, Taiwan is the food capital of Asia. Many foreigners come to Taiwan for its delicacies. Because of that, we Taiwanese people should cherish what we own and take food safety more seriously, lest anything tarnish, tarnish Taiwan's incredible food reputation. Thank you for your attention. The number two. 计时开始。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The progress of technology calls traffic innovation. The distance from person to person is getting closer. People can go wherever they want. However, the only obstacle is the visa, and it could be very troublesome. It might not only cost you a lot of money, but also take plenty of time to get through all the procedures. With the pizza free, it can save both time and money. It benefits people in Taiwan who want to go abroad for any purpose. Visa free in need provides a convenience for the Taiwanese people. The policy is really meaningful for all the citizens in Taiwan. According to the data, nations giving us visa privileges has increased tremendously, making our visa privileges country up to 153. So, what are the benefits to enjoy those privileges? With visa privileges, it's much more convenient for people of Taiwan to go abroad. We can not only broaden our horizon, but also develop global perspective. The most important of all, by traveling more often, people got more opportunities to promote Taiwan. In addition, with visa privileges, Taiwan obtained higher international freedom compared with other countries. And this, it's a significant diplomatic breakthrough to all of us. Having those visa privileges benefits not only people of Taiwan, but also the corporations which work so hard on international trades. According to the research, there are 130 to 159 countries attending visa waiver program in Taiwan. So what does this project actually work? How does it benefit us? Visa free simplifies the procedures and help make international trade prosper. What's more, to those corporations, it can also lower the cost of employing Taiwanese cadres. Visa free signifies the official endorsement of their travel documents indirectly as well. To those corporations in Taiwan which travel around frequently, this policy does increase the convenience. 
Once it stimulates our economy, it may increase the relations to other countries. Visa free is a vital and useful project, yet not many people know how the policy is beneficial to people of Taiwan. So we must make our people understand the policy, take advantage of the benefits, and ultimately promote Taiwan to other countries. Thanks to the efforts that the official in Ministry of Foreign Affairs made, now we can go abroad more quickly and conveniently. Compared with the time to apply for visas, we are able to save much time and money as well. With these benefits, people are willing to go abroad more often. By traveling, we may develop our global perspective but also promote the beauty of Taiwan to impress foreigners. By traveling, people around the world may have more opportunities to know about Taiwan and the Taiwanese people. By doing so, we may help our nation to increase the number of diplomatic allies. In this way, the government and the citizens will have mutual benefits. If we take full advantage of these visas steadily, we may have more opportunities to break through the diplomatic dilemmas and our civil diplomacy will come to fruition. Thank you. 第十五对演讲题目是 Number 4 计时开始 Dear Honorable Judges and Fellow Contestants, Good morning! If we had the opportunity to represent our country on a trip overseas and to interact with local students, how would we introduce Taiwan to them? Melody, Catherine, Emily, and I have come up with a number of creative ways. Today, we are going to share them with everyone present. First, we would like to point out where Taiwan is on the globe and then present a magnified map of Taiwan's terrains, which illustrates that Taiwan is a mountainous island embraced by the ocean. Next, we would present slides on the computer to display Taiwan from different aspects. Among them, our overseas pals will see the towering magnificent Taipei 101, the native Formosan black bear with its characteristic V mark on the chest, the stunning Taroko Gorge, the boisterous night market, and delicious specialties it boasts. And finally, the annual eight day religious festival, pilgrimage procession of Mazu, a march of the lunar calendar. In this warm up activity, we hope our friends can have a quick glance of Taiwan's economical, ecological, religious, and cultural sides. Then, it's time for something tasty for our friends. Melody, your turn. It has always been a typical convention for people in Taiwan to welcome visiting friends with a snacks along with a cup of fresh brewed tea. Therefore, we think it's a great idea to present local students with a sweet treat. Pineapple cakes, which are well known to the world as Taiwan's most popular snacks, seem to be the best choice. Instead of simply enjoying the dessert, we would DIY the pastries with our new friends. In the process of kneading the dough and baking the crust, we will tell them some interesting facts about pineapple cakes. For example, Pineapples used to be richly harvested in Taiwan in the 1970s, so our ancestors came up with ways to make the best use of the surplus. Thus born were delicious pineapple cakes. Besides, pineapple pronounced in Taiwanese, ong lai, sounds the same as the word for the coming of prosperity. So, pineapples are symbolic of prosperity, wealth, and good luck in our culture, even to this day. Next, let's travel with Catherine to Pingxi, the capital of Sky Lanterns. 
Taiwan's Pink Sea Skylander Festival was floated by Discovery Channel as the second biggest New Year's Eve celebration in the world. Therefore, we would amaze the local student by playing a short video clip of the spectacular night sky dotted with overwhelming beauty of thousands of sky lanterns aloft. After briefly explaining the origins of setting up sky lanterns, we would invite the local students to write wishes and prayers on the authentic sky lanterns brought from Taiwan. In the process of writing, we would take advantage of the opportunity to introduce the art of calligraphy to our foreign pals. At night, we would release the sky lanterns we completed together and witness the breathtaking view. While watching sky lanterns slowly rise up into the sky, we hope it will leave a deep impression and a happy memory within them. We can also fill some miniature paper lanterns and draw our national flag on each and give them to local students as keepsakes. What follows is Emily's Aboriginal show. An introduction of Taiwan could by no means be complete without a profile of the Aboriginal cultures. First that will come on stage is a fashion show where we will put on the Aboriginal attire that characterizes main Taiwanese tribes. Coming up next would be the practice of facial tattooing. In addition to showing pictures of the facial tattoos, we would use face paint instead to let the local students experience the fading arts in person. After different patterns are selected and painted on the face, we would reveal whether they're a male or a female, a warrior or a maiden. At the end, we will top our introduction off with a singing and dancing performance adapted from the Ame Harvest Festival. Before taking the ball and waving goodbye, we would never forget to encourage our friends to pay a visit and see Taiwan for themselves. Known for its hospitality, people in Taiwan would be a good host. Just be our guest! Thank you for your attention. 第十四对演讲题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。Good morning, dear judges. Our topic is Number Five. We live in an international and interconnected world, which is becoming interdependent because of the explosive knowledge and technology growth. In this increasingly globalized world. We and other countries are connected in many ways, and interaction among us can't be avoided. Therefore, it is important for us, the global citizens, to expand our vision toward a global perspective. But what is a global perspective? A global perspective refers to the way or situation in which a person view or regards something and related to the rest of the world. This worldview characterizes a person's ability to view issues from the point of view of people living in other countries. People with a global perspective will have a better understanding of worldwide business and be capable of taking a broader view of experience, knowledge, and learning. They also tend to seek to understand their own, the links between their own lives and those of people throughout the world. Having a global perspective makes the most sense of today's confused and troubled world. The wars happening far away in the Middle East may have an impact on our economy. The air we breathe could be polluted because of the air pollution in a far away country. The coffee consumed in the local cafe may influence the farmers' life in Africa. As a member of the global village. We can't escape from the impact of local activities on the globe, with regard to such things as pollution, exploitation of natural resources. Thus, we have to raise the awareness of real issues and strive to maintain a global perspective at all times, with the goal of sustaining and improving the earth for current and future generations to enjoy. Such awareness. Includes the multiple aspects of the environment, human rights, 
sustainability, poverty, fair trade, and global health, etc. Since it's important for us to expand our vision toward the global perspective, how can we develop ours? As a senior student in Taiwan, it is not affordable to spend a big sum of money to travel all over the world to acquire the world views. What on earth can we do to achieve the goal? In fact, Taiwan has already been a mature society with modernization. We can take advantage of the modern technology, such as the internet, to help us to have a better understanding of other countries, and thus attain the goal of developing our global perspective. In our present life, we spend most of our time at school studying and don't have many opportunities to travel abroad. Hence, studying history, languages, cultures may be very good ways for us to gain a global perspective too. In those classes, we learn to characterize our points of view to form an international perspective. Through such learning at school, we will have a better understanding of our own culture and be open to the culture of others. For example, in learning social justice and human rights, we will have a chance to understand the impact of inequality and discrimination the importance of standing up for our own rights and our responsibility to respect the rights of others. Those skills, attitudes, and values developed enable us to work together to bring about change for common good if we get a chance to join some international volunteers organizations of human rights in the future. Hopefully, we will make some contribution to the world on some issues in the future. A famous philosopher advised, every person takes the limits of their vision for the limits of the world. Therefore, it is important for us to expand our vision toward a global perspective and adopt this perspective to begin to meet the grand challenges for humanity. This is the end of our speech. Thank you for your attention. Bao. Thank you. 第十三对演讲题目是 Number Two， 计时开始。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure that everyone has noticed the proliferation of visa-free privileges. This year, according to a report issued by Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Taiwan, there are more than 140 countries that offer Taiwanese tourists visa-free privileges. In fact, With the continuous development of international relations and national tourism industry, more and more countries simplify visa regime to facilitate their contacts with citizens from other countries. Taiwanese government therefore strives for various visa privileges with all its might to make this beautiful island a better place. Now, I would like to share with you our humble viewpoint on why this policy matters to every one of us. And to the countries that Taiwan has established diplomatic relations with, first of all, the greatest advantage of such a policy lies in conducting business on an international scale with a new level of ease. When business trips to other country become uncomplicated in a new era of e-commerce. Numerous opportunities for exchanges and cooperation increase. Multinational corporations that engage in business bring a lot of possibilities. Meanwhile, by integrating e-commerce industries, telecommunications, and networking, we can surely market the best of Taiwan, further our local industries, and better overseas markets. Thus. The policy not only facilitates the spread of international business and trade, but also allows businesses a greater ability to grow, to spread different ideas, and to conduct business deals among multiple countries. Tourism industry has positive impact on economic growth. Without the hassle of filling out piles of paperwork to receive visas, 
we can freely arrange our travel plans and embark on a pleasant journey. Tourism in Taiwan plays a pivotal role when it comes to one of the major contributors to the economy of Taiwan. Every year, Taiwan profits greatly from an increasing number of international visitors. As a matter of fact, the number of tourists in today's global world, especially in the Asia-Pacific region, is rapidly rising. Sightseeing has become a development chain in the new global economy. Moreover, according to a World Tourism Organization's prediction, the number of tourists in Asian region will grow up to 102% in the near future. Because visa-free privilege not only removes barriers, but also open the door to the world. Tourism apparently will become the main pillar of our domestic economy while serving as the best channel of promoting international exchange. Last but not least, another hidden but meaningful benefit of this policy lays emphasis on promoting cultural and educational exchange between Taiwan and other countries. As we all know, Taiwan reserves a beautiful natural atmosphere. Through a wide variety of international exchange programs, we would emulate other countries better than our Taiwan. Under such stimulus of culture shocks, we would broaden our horizons by breaking out of comfort zone. We would also realize how unique Taiwan's historical and cultural legacy is after sharing our personal heritage, costumes, and cultures. By doing so, we would enhance our competitiveness and most importantly, increase mutual understanding between Taiwan and other countries. Thank you for listening. Bao. 第十一对演讲题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。Good morning, honorable judges and competitors. Today, our topic is experience of developing our global dis perspectives. Hi, my name is Catherine. This May, I had the opportunity I can go to Japan with the educational purpose. In effort, before I went to Japan, I couldn't ima imagine how polite is Japanese were. But in, when I were in Japan, I know I can no doubt say that Japanese were the most polite people. I have an ex example. When I take the elevator in Japan, when Japanese came in and they say, excuse me, I, I am very surprised, so I ask him why. And he said he thinks he bothered me. And I thought that this is very, very experience, definitely a unique experience. So I had a really good time in Japan. If I had another chance, I, can, I hope I can return and enjoy the time in there. Hi, my name is Elvro. Today I want to share my experience of communicating with the exchange students in our school. This new school semester, there is an exchange student from Japan in our class. She is really a cute and lovely person. She often asks her some questions about Taiwan. We also ask her her daily life in Japan. Although both countries are in Asia, we found that there are still some difference between two countries, not only culture, but only the traditions. It is really a unique experience. Hi, my name's Arno. I also have exchange. I also have uh, some experience of exchange student. And this year, our class came an uh, exchange student called Lauren. He is, she's from America. And uh, when the first time we saw her, she was quite shy and quiet. But after a few months, she was very energetic and passionate. Although we are in different continents, uh, we, we still have a lot of common. And for example, we both like Korean pop and Harry Potter. Uh, I hope
Hi, my name is Hiro. I was an exchange student last year in Denmark. Um, I lived in a rural area in Denmark, and it was really a countryside. Every day I go to school, I had to walk two kilometers with my host brother. And my host brother is one year older than me. And every day we had, we had to talk about different topics because two kilometers is really a long way. And so every day we talked about the differences between Taiwan and Denmark. And we found out that although we had a lot of like, differences on cultures, traditions, and food, we both enjoyed parts of different cultures. And um, during my stay there, we really had a great time. And we talked about a lot of pot political, political problems between Taiwan and Denmark. Like Denmark has a lot of problems with Muslims. And recently, the news with Syria and war the war zone in Syria, there was a lot of refugees created. And we talked about that as well. And we both thought that if the countries had ability to take in more refugees, then we should do so as for moral dignity or whatsoever. So <clears throat> although we lived in a long distance, we both, commu we both um, Number four, Good morning, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we are going to share with you our opinions on how to introduce Taiwan to local students if we had a chance to travel overseas and interact with them. Here, I will be a captain and welcome the local students aboard the flight leading them to get a better understanding of where and what Taiwan actually is. First, I will show them the location of Formosa by means of Google Maps. I will let them see the graduate of mountains and landmark Taipei 101. Besides, I will expose them to Taiwanese culture and unique festival experiences, such as traditional food and religious rituals. Now, Jeff, would you like to give us some traditional festival activities that we could present to students overseas? Jeff? Yes, thank you, Tiffany. First, I'll guide my passengers to savor an old style food, Tang Yuan, or glutinous rice dumplings in sweet soup, which is mostly made and eaten on the day of winter solstice to show that one is getting older by one year. I could get the ingredients of Tang Yuan in the Oriental food store and make them with the local students to experience the texture of Tang Yuan. Telling them its sticky touch means inseparability and its sweetness represents the happiness of family life. What's more, I could prepare sky lanterns, releasing them into the night sky with the local students' wishes written on the lanterns. In this way, they could experience the true spirit of Lantern Festival in person. Now, Wendy, would you like to share your creative ideas to introduce Taiwan? Wendy? Sure, Jeff. Here, I will present a religious belief to the local students, since it is an indispensable of the daily life for the Taiwanese. If my memory serves me right, by 2013, there have been 12,083 temples in Taiwan. I could show the local students the temple density by means of Google Maps as well. In addition, I will introduce a 26-year-old Taiwanese young man, Wu Jianhen, who spent three years touring 72 countries with Dian Ying San Taizi. His idea originates from a cultural dance performance, Zheng Tou, and combines a traditional Taiwanese folk dance with modern pop music. Not only can the traditional dances be seen at local temples in Taiwan, but they can also be performed during the opening ceremonies of international certain activities and exhibitions, such as World Game 2009 and Expo 2010 in Shanghai, China. Now, Lawrence, do you have any good way to introduce Taiwan? Lawrence? Yes, Wendy, my partner. 
If the local students see the magnificent mountains, taste the sweet Tang Yuan, and experience the religious life of Taiwan, I will feast their ears on Aboriginal music of Taiwan. Take one of the most famous pop song singer, Zhang Hui Mei, Ah Mei, for example, who not only popularizes Aboriginal music and also passes down Puyoma customs with her energetic scenes. Now, at the end of our flight, would you like to say something, Tiffany, our captain? Thank you, Lawrence. Ladies and gentlemen, young as we are, with great passion, we can still stand out and stepping forward to promote Taiwan to people from all over the world, like Wu Jiehen or Amei. After all, it's our responsibility to keep our traditions and to pass down the cultural heritages and existence to not only the next generation, but also to the whole world. Thank you. Thank you very much. The number three. Good morning. In our increasingly globalized world, international perspective is an ability for us to view issues from the point view of people all over the world. With devices such as smartphones and tablets, getting information from the antipod has never been easier. When I heard the speech given in Harvard from Malala, I've learned about the lack of education right of young girls and children. When I read the article of Sedyarthi, factories filling with child labor came to my mind. International perspective. <sighs> Fuck. But through the internet, I've built, I've, I've built up the most important part, and also the meaning of having international perspective. That is, having compassion for others, and be able to see what they need, and what we can do for them. Next. We'll have Zoe to talk about more. In many different ways, developing countries where the most important reserves of the biosphere are found continue to fuel the development of wealthier countries at the cost of their own present and future. The developed countries out to help pay this debt by significantly limiting their consumption of non-renewable energy and by assisting poor countries to support policies and programs of sustainable development. The poorest areas are less capable of adopting new models for reducing environmental impact because they lack the wherewithal to develop the necessary processes and to cover their costs. We must continue to be aware that there are differentiated responsibilities. We need to strengthen the conviction that we are one humanity. There are no frontiers or barriers, political or social, behind which we can hide. Still less is there room for the globalization of indifference. Next, Kelly would further elaborate. Yuta Phillips once said that the earth is not dying, it has been killed, and the people who are killing it have names and addresses. Indeed, we, human beings, are devastating our homeland while seeking for the development. So how should we raise the environmental awareness and what can we do? Zhang Yanzhong, a Chinese engineer who started the Eurasia Green Gallery, had crossed 13 countries from Beijing to Rome in 210 days by bike. Riding on a bike with two other friends, John started their journey on April 22nd, which is the World Earth Day. Along the way, they planted 335 trees with local residents, promoting the environmental awareness to neighboring communities and schools. 
Considering the various weather in different places, John and his partners did a lot of research so that they could plant appropriate trees in suitable places instead of hurting our treasurable land. Moreover, all of the trees they planted are positioned by the GPS and were all entrusted to the locals. And now we'll have Benny to conclude our speech. They spend the nights at the locals' houses and give them saplings as gifts. Sincerely sharing the joy and the heart to protect the earth, Zhang's group is planting not only trees, but hope for a promising future. In addition, not only footprints, but also vitality is spread to the world. By planting trees while biking along the way, Zhang combined his dream while traveling around the world and protecting our global village, which broadened and deepened the meaning of dreams. There are a lot of things we could do or not to do to make our world change, which is actually up to you. However, with everyone's effort, we're going to make our world better together. Thank you. number According to a passport index established by financial advisory firm Arten Capital, the ROC passport is in the 20th place in the passport power rank. This ranking is calculated by the number of countries that passport holders can visit without purchasing a visa. As a country with impaired international status, having official ties with only 22 nations, this ranking is a testament of the substantive result of our diplomatic endeavor these years. We have been persuading more and more countries to grant visa privileges to ROC passport holders. Based on the latest update of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as of October 2015, with the new addition of Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Liberia, Djibouti, and Gabon, the number of countries and regions that facilitate the treatment of ROC passports has has reached 153, inclusive of 108 offering us visa waivers, 34 allowing landing visas, and 11 accepting electronic visas. Although China keeps bashing on Taiwan economically and politically for its survival in the international arena, the statistics prove the fact that our viable diplomacy to avoid being marginalized has had a tangible breakthrough. Being granted visa privileges is significant, not only for the people of Taiwan, but also for our international relations. For individuals, the most direct and apparent advantage is the saving of time and money. There is no more time consuming waiting long lines at embassies or consular offices. We can be spared the hassle of preparing the related documents and filling out visa application forms. Travel plans can be more flexible and itineraries can be more diverse. With the benefit of visa waivers, an average family of four can even save over $5,000 NT in visa processing fees. Besides the aspects of convenience and economy, the policy conveys more profound significance. It manifests a remarkable level of recognition of the law of binding spirit, an impressive standard of personal behavior evinced by ROC nationals. A decent caliber is witnessed in our global views in our respect for local conventions, in our adaptability to different cultures, and in our discipline of observing laws. The low rate of visa refusals in most countries and regions proves that the development of our society in educating our people is highly applauded. In terms of our international relations, the privileges of facilitated entry signify the success the ROC government has achieved through constitutive efforts over the past few years. Our prosperous economic growth, outstanding intellectual performance, monumental cultural accomplishment, noteworthy humanitarian commitment, and acclaimed political stability are all the specific facts that paved the way for a diplomatic acknowledgement. For the international trade, the visa policy helps expand our overseas market and expedites our involvement in world commerce. For the academic arena, 
This favorable treatment enhances our scholastic contributions and offers us more opportunities to display our intellects. For the creative stage, we are welcome to spread the brilliance of our traditions and demonstrate the soft power of our original art, music, and design. For the emergency relief, our charity organization can be more promptly dispatched and pro provide volunteer services. For the global politics, we can promote bilateral cooperation and be devoted to world peace. According to a statistics provided by the Tourism Bureau from 2009 to 2014, among the top 10 most frequented outbound destinations of the Taiwanese, Japan, Hong Kong, South Korea, Macau, Thailand, U the US, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Singapore have granted the visa privileges. The 2010 installments of the Schengen Visa Waiver Treatment for Taiwanese passport holders broaden our map of visa exempt entry in the European Union. On October 2, 2012, Taiwan became the 37th country to be included in the U.S. Visa Waiver Program. The inclusion carries more weight for it symbolizes a huge step toward the diplomatic recognition since the termination of our official ties with the U.S. in 1979. Thanks to the government's efforts, Taiwan finds a calm ship of viable diplomacy to sell in the treacherous seas of the international community. Despite the fact that we are denied the, to the access to the United, Un, United Nations, these visa privileges bring us closer to all the continents in the world. Although we cannot change the status quo, we can still prove our existence and embrace the world.